All right, everyone. So I do want to be mindful of time and that we are a few minutes past three o'clock. So we'll get started. If we have some students who are just joining us still, you won't miss out on much in the first few minutes as we all get introduced and get going today. But my name is Dr. Jessica Syed and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at Rowan. And I wanted to thank all of our students for joining us this afternoon. I'm sure we have accepted students on the call. So a special congratulations to any of our incoming students for the fall semester, whether you are a freshman student joining us with our class of 2024 or a transfer student coming in. So as we get started, our student attendees, hopefully everyone can see us and hear us but we can't see you and we can't hear you. So the way that you guys can communicate with us and make this as interactive as possible is by using the Q&A feature on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. So if everyone wants to practice doing that now, I know we have some students here who have been on other sessions. We have Jackson in the house, who's I think it's your third session today, right Jackson? So I think you're probably an expert at the Q&A function by now, but if this is anyone's first virtual event, I do want everyone to just try it out. So if everyone could write in, Introduce yourself. I'll be shouting out some students. We can see who's on uh, the session with us today and get to know you as best we can. Let us know if you are a freshman student, if you're a transfer student, if you're accepted for the fall, you'll be joining us on campus this upcoming year. If you are a younger student, still in high school, and you guys are just starting to do some research on different colleges, let us know. Uh, give us your hometown, where you're from. And for those of you who have been on other sessions with me, you guys know I'm always trying to find a good recipe or a Netflix show to watch in my quarantine time, but how about give me some good workouts that you guys have done. Um, for those of you who I've talked to before, you know I'm into my free trial for my Peloton app and I absolutely love it. I think I should be featured on a commercial. I'm like all about my Peloton app. It's very great. Um, so I'm curious what else you guys have been doing to stay fit and active at home. If you've been walking your dog or going for a run, let us know. Looks like my computer is crashing. So give me one second. I hope I don't lose everybody. Not sure if you guys can still hear me or not. We can still hear you, Jess. You guys can? Okay, I can't see anything. Um, <laughs> and everybody's frozen and my wheels are spinning. So I'm hoping this whole thing doesn't go down. If it does, I'll reboot it um, and we'll see what happens. I'm not gonna touch anything. I hope it comes back. So. Um, Karen, I don't know if you can see if any students are writing in, if you want to shout some students out um, where they're from. Yeah, we have a few students who are going to be transfer students, um, some people from RCBC and RCSJ, so we're excited to have them. Um, a junior at Atlantic City High School, uh, Alexandra, she's in Margate, New Jersey, um, so we're excited to have her as well. I can't scroll for some reason, but that's all I see right now. I think we, I think Jess is frozen. Is everybody else able to? So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, great. Uh, would you like me to go ahead? Okay, go ahead and start. So. <laughs> well, I'm back. <laughs> oh. See, we can't hear you. I don't know if anybody else can hear her. How's okay. that? Yeah, we can yeah, hear Okay, you. perfect. <laughs> Technology, can't live with it, can't live without it. Um, I'm Sue Lerman. I'm Dean of the College of Business uh, at Rowan, and I'm so pleased to have you um, joining us today. And keep on sending in where you're from. I think um, the chat function may be frozen, but hopefully, ah, oh, there are something just came in. Let's see. Uh, Jackson, I'm going to be a freshman student at Rowan in the fall of 2020. That is terrific. Carrie Ann, junior in high school, could be attending in 2021. Great, keep on uh, sending those in. So we have a, a panel for you today, and um, I'm going to start by introducing the panelists, and, um, but we would like it to be interactive. So you uh, send us your questions, and as they come through, uh, Jessica will um, read the question and I will uh, point in the direction of someone who can uh, best answer it. So um, I already uh, introduced myself again, Sue Lehrman, Dean of the Rohr College of Business. Uh, we have Karen Murtha, who was uh, reading your names off there a minute ago. Uh, Karen is our Assistant Dean for Undergraduate Studies, so she's someone that um, you would work closely with, get to know very well. 
Uh, we have Amy right now. Amy, you want to wave your hand? There's Amy. Amy is the director of our uh, Rower Center for Professional Development. That's our very own career services center. Uh, at uh, right in as you walk in the door of uh, beautiful business hall, she's right there. Uh, we have Baron Gunner. Baron is the um, chair of the Department of uh, Marketing and Business Information Systems. So welcome, Baron. We have Philip Merchandani. I know he's on. I don't see him. Uh, Dilip is the uh, chair of our management and entrepreneurship program and human resources management is also in that department. We have Stephanie Weidman. Um, Stephanie, wave your hand. I know you're there. Everybody, nice, nice to see, see you. Here. Thanks for being here. Great. So Stephanie is the head of our accounting. Oh, there you are. Uh, of our accounting and finance department. And last, but far from least, a very important person on the panel today is uh, Rachel uh, DeGrasa. Uh, Rachel, you wanna raise your hand and maybe say a word and they'll bring your face up on the screen. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Rowan's awesome, so hopefully you guys come to the conference. So, yeah, absolutely. So the reason that Rachel, oh, there's, oh, there you are, uh, is uh, so important is that she is uh, a student. So um, while you're thinking about your questions, and be sure to type them in, I'm going to turn to Rachel and say, why? Tell us about yourself. What year are you? What are you doing in school? Why did you come? Just anything you want to tell us. Sure. So uh, again, I'm Rachel DeGrosse. I actually just graduated. So I guess I'm still considered a student somewhere. But I just graduated with both my Bachelor of Science in Business Management as well as Human Resources Management. I'm also an intern for Amy Rhino on her team for the Center for Professional Development. And I've been there for about two years now, which is crazy. It's flown by so fast. But we do a lot of great work at the Center for Professional Development. And I know for myself and for my friends, just interning there and getting so involved with the College of Business was so beneficial for me throughout my whole college career and really made me feel like a sense of home from away from home, which was great. And they do so many great events and so many different opportunities that just last the lifetime and memories and even just career coaching and things like that. They really do go a long way. So I'm looking forward to your questions and hopefully hearing some of the things that you guys are looking forward to or just anything in regards to the College of Business and we're here to help and I'm so excited that you guys are here. Great. So you you actually have two majors, management yes. and human resources management. Yes. Um, how how is that really hard? How did you manage to do that in four years? So I actually started out actually when I first came to Rowan, I was undecided and I knew I wanted to be in business, but I just wasn't sure where. So after taking like a couple of the main courses and I did transfer over uh, originally into human resources management. And then it wasn't until about halfway my junior year, it was spring break. And I was like, wow, I'm kind of done all of my HR classes. Maybe I should think about picking up another major. And I went to my advisor and she was like, it's really simple and you have a lot of room. You have mostly just free electives. So I decided within my senior year that I was gonna pick up the management degree. And I was able to complete it in two semesters. And it actually made me focus a little bit more on business because if I didn't pick up another major, I would have just been taking free elective classes. So I would rather have focused and gotten a second degree than maybe taking something like pottery or something a little more simple that was on the course curriculum for me. But I decided to pick up that double major. And since they're in the same department, it was really very easy for me. That's great. And do a lot of students do that or are you very unusual? Yeah, a lot of students, a lot of the times people who are HR or maybe management, they do pick up that HR or management second degree because it really is so simple. I know a lot of people who also minor in different things, a lot of um, accounting, they also double up with finance just because it is so simple. Um, MIS is a big minor as well. And a lot of my friends, mostly, mostly all of them are either a double major or minor in something. I don't know too many people who just do one thing and the College of Business really makes it so easy in order to integrate all the different aspects of the majors into one degree or minor or certificate. Excellent. Well, we'll hear more from you um, in a while. I don't see questions coming in. I don't know if it's because 
the function is stuck. Um, but keep sending them in and hopefully uh, and if, if we don't see questions, we'll try to think of the questions that you would ask and I'll ask them for you. Um, so uh, let's turn next to uh, Karen Murtha. Karen, you want to shake your hand and come on the screen? Hello. Why don't you tell us, uh, I already said that you do uh, a lot uh, of work with undergraduate students. Uh, tell us about your job. Well, first of all, before you were in your current role, you were an advisor right. uh, for our students. So why don't you tell us about how advising works? Um, because I think it's very special at Rowan and the Rural College of Business. And then maybe kind of segue into what your current job is. Yeah, sure. So in uh, the Rural College of Business and at Rowan in general, um, there are academic advisors embedded in the academic department. So you'll have an advisor assigned to you based on your major, and a lot of times, sometimes your last name as well. Um, so they'll work very closely with you to make sure you're taking your classes in the right order to help you keep on track to graduate in your time frame. Um, and they also work closely with the department, so they're very aware of um, any curriculum changes, what you know, prerequisites are involved, and just everything you need they need to know to help keep you on track. So definitely make sure um, once you start at Rowan that you're meeting with your academic advisor at least once a semester. And they're a great first stop. Um, so if you ever have a question, I always tell people just contact your advisor first because they're experts in knowing where to refer students. Um, so they're a great resource for you. And like I said, everyone, your first day, you'll be assigned an academic advisor. Um, so in addition to working with our advisors now, I also work with other camp, um, campus offices to make sure our students have resources. So I also work with the tutoring office to help bring uh, tutoring into the building. Um, so for College of Business courses, we have tutoring available in Business Hall, which is great. Um, it's also available in the Tutoring Center, which is in Savitz Hall. Hopefully you all have had a chance to go there. Um, but we also have tutoring in the building. So a lot of your classes will be in Business Hall, um, especially your business courses. So you can just walk right over the tutoring on the second floor as well. Um, I also work with our student clubs, so we have, um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but <laughs> we have 12 student clubs that are really active. Um, they do, it's a great opportunity to both network with students who are interested in your major, as well as professionals um, in that field. Uh, so I definitely encourage you all to get um, involved with the, the different clubs. There's at least one for every major, um, but there's also general clubs like women in business. Um, and we also have two honor societies. So there's a lot of opportunities to get involved. So Karen, a, a question came up um, that sort of harkens back to your advising days. And it says, are people, and this comes from Carrie Ann, um, are people ever able to graduate earlier than four years? Absolutely, uh, yes. So typically you'd have to take some summer or winter classes. Um, or more credits than the average number of credits every semester, but absolutely, you can. We definitely have students graduate in three years, and there is a um, three-year program uh, with the marketing major. That's the only major right now in the College of Business that has a three-year program. Um, but it, but any major you can um, graduate potentially in three years if you work closely with your advisor. And certainly, if you bring in. Um... Uh, college credits from high school or from a community college uh, or AP credits, those are all additional ways that people are able to graduate earlier than four years or stay four years but get a, an additional uh, major at the same time. Right. So Absolutely. that's that's great. Um, so why don't we turn to, uh, it's great, I have this entire list of people I can choose from here. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at the questions. Okay. Um, so, um, Amy, why don't you tell us uh, a little more about the Center for Professional Development? We heard uh, some from Rachel um, from the student perspective, but um, what's your what's your perspective? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. So excited that you took time to join us today. Um, and Rachel, thanks for the overview of the center. Um, we're really sad to see Rachel grow. Go. That's how connected we get to our students. Um, so my, my team is myself, as well as a full-time employer relations associate. 
Um, but we are really a student run office as well. So I have a lot of interns, usually college of business students that work with me and help kind of execute on the programming. But when I'm talking about the center, obviously, you know, we, we referenced it's a career center specifically for business students. So you all will have, if you choose to come to Rowan or are coming to Rowan, the main career center, but you specifically have the College of Business Career Center. And we start working with you from day one. Um, we have course embedded curriculum. We have daily offerings to help you with you know, something as simple as your resume or something as big as, I don't know what I wanna do with my life. So we really want to help you get on the right path, get connected to employers. I'm sure Rachel and everyone can concur that we have something going on almost every day of the week. And we have multiple employers in business hall or virtually connecting with you most days as well. So we just want to see you be successful, get on the right path with your career and connect you to industry. Great, thank you. Um, a question has come in. How about transfer students? Are there any options to go full time online? Um, so, Karen, could you perhaps address that one? Sure. Um, so, depending on the major, um, you may be able to do a full semester online. Um, but a lot of our business core courses, so every student has um, part of their major is called like business foundation or business core courses. Um, and those are often offered online, or there's at least one section usually every semester online. Um, and then some majors have certain courses online. So depending on the major, you may be able to do it. We don't have a full degree online, uh, so you wouldn't be able to do all of your degree online, but you may be able to take a semester online. Okay, great. And uh, maybe I'll take this next one from Zachary. Uh, do you have a five-year MBA program uh, in business? And we do have an MBA, um, a, a great MBA that is uh, adding some new exciting twists and turns uh, in the year, next couple of years uh, that will be ready just about the time that you, you hit uh, the MBA program uh, that will offer some very interesting career focus, very timely career focus. Uh, things that are happening, like perhaps esports management, is one that we're giving some thought to just as a little teaser. Um, so, you as a undergrad student, um, if you have a certain GPA, can take um, several courses in your senior year. We call them senior privilege courses that are MBA courses that count towards your MBA degree, but they also count towards your undergrad degree. So, you can count them twice. And in doing that, um, if you go a, a full year, take uh, MBA courses full time for a full year, you could probably finish the MBA program in that period of time. So it's a really uh, great option for, uh, for students who are looking to head in that direction. And it's something that we provide lots of information about. We have uh, open houses, the uh, head of the MBA program is right in our building, um, and she welcomes people coming in anytime, undergrads coming in anytime to chat with her. And the advisor that you're assigned could also tell you about that program. So uh, let's see, uh, Stephanie, we have a question for you. Um, I am, and I can't see the name of the person, but I'm an accounting major. Um, what are some employers that offer internships to Rowan students? Sure, I'd be happy to talk about that. So uh, we actually have great job placement for our uh, accounting and finance majors. Really, all the business majors do very well. We have a couple of career specific or discipline specific career fairs for our majors. Um, all of our students are well placed for internships and full time opportunities. So, if you're familiar with the big four accounting firms, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Deloitte, uh, EY, um, and um, uh, KPMG, uh, we have interns placed with all of those firms the large regional firms, Grant Thornton, um, BDO, Eisner Amper. Uh, you know, I don't know how familiar you are with the names of the accounting firms, but our students do very well in terms of placement uh, for internships and full-time opportunities. An internship is not required um, as a part of our accounting curriculum, but I would say a vast majority, probably 70 to 80% of our students do at least one internship 
in their field uh, before graduation and many students do multiple internships as well. Great. Uh, let's see. Um, we have a, a question that I'll, I'll also send uh, Amy's way. Do most students go into the MBA program or do they get jobs after an undergraduate degree? Um, sure, I'd be happy to talk to that. Um, so obviously that's an individual decision, but um, when advising students on if an MBA is the right fit for them directly from undergrad, I think it really depends on the amount of experience that you've had in terms of internships because it's really an applied degree. And what you'll be learning in the classroom is really um, applied to your knowledge of the workplace. And sometimes if you're a student who maybe has focused strictly on academics during your time in undergraduate, it would be very difficult to apply it to the concepts in an MBA program. So sometimes it's good to go and get a few years of work experience under your belt and then be able to come back. The other perk of that is an employer might pay for it, which would be really nice. Um, but there are definitely students. In fact, one worked on our team in the RCPD who she did degree in three. She was a marketing major. So she had kind of that fourth year that she wasn't staying to do a typical undergraduate degree. She had had two awesome internships under her belt and she went and did the MBA program. So there are, that would be an example um, of somebody who it is a right decision, but you have to kind of weigh out if you have that industry knowledge to bring to the classroom. Great, thank you. I'll just chime in here. Yes, most students do actually get a job after the undergraduate degree. <clears throat> a few will go into the MBA program directly. Great. The vast majority of, your, of our undergraduate baccalaureate degree uh, get a job in industry after they graduate. Great, thank you, Dilla. Um, Baron, we have a uh, question for you. Um, your logistics and supply chain management MBA program, MBA program. Ah, uh, so we are actually have an MBA program in logistics and supply chain management. We have an undergrad program, and uh, Baron Gunner can talk about that. Offers work experience for international students. So that's a question. Um, supply chain uh, and work experience for international students. Yeah. Hi. Hello, everybody. This is Baron Gunner, chair of the uh, marketing and business information department. Thank you, Dean Lerman, for the introduction. So that's actually where supply chain and and marketing programs are housed. Um, so our supply chain program. By the way, we have a webinar tomorrow at two o'clock. Um, so if you want to just come in and talk to me as well as one of our faculty members, we'll be happy to answer your questions. But uh, right now for international students, of course, you know, you know the situation. <laughs> so I don't have to remind everybody. But um, yeah, we did have a bunch of international students uh, who majored in supply chain, even on the MBA level. Um, so I is Jennifer uh, here now? I think they were trying to get their permit to stay in the United States for about like a year or so to get that experience. I mean, I don't want to give you any, you know, wrong information, but that I'm not sure where the process um, is right now. But we did have, uh, you know, students, international students of supply chain program for the MBA. But our real strength is in the undergraduate program. And in fact, we're offering, you know, in line with the undergraduate program, we're offering MBA um, classes as well. Uh, it takes every, you know, process that starts before manufacturing till the, you know, the, the product reaches the end user. So our supply chain program is really well uh, designed that touches every process within the supply chain, you know, industry. Um, and it is designed in a way to uh, allow students to double major in different areas. Uh, in fact, most of our supply chain students double major in marketing or um, at MIS and they get like two degrees when they graduate and our placement rate is really fantastic with the uh, supply chain program. It's about like 95, 94%. Um, so, but again, we can give you more information tomorrow um, at um, two o'clock when we talk about specifically talk about the supply chain program. So. Great, thank you. Um, and the next one is for uh, Dilip Merchandani, head of the management and entrepreneurship department. Uh, Dilip, uh, are internships mandatory for business management majors? 
Yes, uh, <clears throat> so the Department of Management Entrepreneurship has three degree programs, as we said, management, human resources and entrepreneurship. And two of our majors, uh, management and human resource management, are highly experiential oriented, which means we believe in learning by doing. Uh, that's generally true of the College of Business, uh, but we do require a supervised internship class, which is required for all management majors. Um, and that how that works is that students find an internship, often through the assistance of RCPD. Uh, Amy and her team are, are well versed at helping guiding students from an early stage to find an internship. The ideal time to do this internship uh, is the summer after your junior year. Uh, and the summer is the most popular time for internships. And believe it or not, even with this environment that we are in today, uh, this past week, five students found summer internships. Uh, so that uh, keeps rolling uh, along and we'll have a cohort doing summer internships this summer. So they work in an internship organization, but at the same time, they're concurrently enrolled in a class, which I teach. So I can tell you all kinds of things about that class, uh, but I won't go into detail now. And you can earn up three credits for that class, which is a required class. And sometimes the summer students can also take it for six credits because the other three credits count as an elective uh, in the elective bank for management majors also true of HR majors. So um, we we want everyone to graduate with an internship. Obviously, as Amy said, it's ideal if you have more than one internship. So this one is for credit, but other internships that you do may not be for credit. So that's the short story on our internship program within the management degree program. Uh, Dilip, um, when is your presentation this week, your uh, program specific presentation? Yeah, we have uh, that on Wednesday at 4 p.m. I believe the invitations have gone out. Yes, Karen, uh, they may have gone out. So we will do a virtual uh, information session on Wednesday at 4 p.m. And you should receive the link through whatever channels are being used by the university or the College of Business. So Great. do come to I have another question for you. You're very popular right now. Uh, this is from uh, Jackson. He said, do students in management classes participate in organizing clubs and events around campus? Um, so every uh, department, every major actually has at least one business club and the management students typically participate in the Society for the Advancement of Management or the SAM club. And we have a pretty active chapter that has won many awards over the years. They go uh, every year to a national competition. Unfortunately, it's always in March, uh, late March, uh, unfortunately this year. That was canceled obviously for obvious reasons, but that was going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. So we send, I don't know, anywhere from six to 12 people to that conference uh, every year. And uh, they participate in various competitions and usually come back with awards. Um, but there are other clubs that management majors join. Uh, they could be interested in the marketing club, the MA club, they could be interested in the Sherm Club. We also have a CEO club for entrepreneurs. And so um, that kind of ties into the previous question about double majors. Somebody had asked, and the management HR double major is very popular. Uh, lots, lots and lots of students do that. Management marketing is another popular combination. Some people now do management and entrepreneurship. Um, so the people who have multiple interests will often belong to two clubs, three clubs maybe even four clubs, and I know of students who've actually held leadership positions in at least two clubs, if not more. They could be president or vice president in, in more than one club. So we have a nice vibrant group of students who participate uh, um, and give their time and effort and make it much better in terms of the student life and opportunities. Yeah, uh, if I can pick up like the student clubs, may I? Of course. Yeah, and just basically picking up where um, Dilip left off, uh, what I like about our student organizations is actually that they, the, the nature of collaboration, they do tend to collaborate, you know, together. So they organize multiple events on campus and, you know, those events may take the form of like guest lectures to executive residence programs. And that's where we collaborate with the uh, Center for Professional Development to off campus events and um, like site visits, job shadowing. Right. So, I mean, um, in our department, we have three major specific um, student clubs and like the American Marketing Association and CEO Club, for example, they organize lots of events or AMA and uh, MIS you know, clubs, they organize lots of events. Again, those events uh, could be on campus as well as off campus. And every student has a budget from the Student Government Association, so they do have funds to support these you know, uh, events and also help 
you know, members and everybody, every student to uh, to network, to socialize with professionals, you know, build their sort of like soft skills as well as like professional skills. Um, and they also do uh, lots of fundraising activities and, you know, uh, every bit of you know, event that they put together is, of course, it's a great advantage, great resume builder. Um, and if, you know, anybody is participating in these events, especially like leadership, you know, positions, um, the outcome is always wonderful. And um, I know, Dilip, I'm sure your your students um, have great success stories as well in our department. You know, students who are really heavily involved with um, the student clubs, AMA, MIS, or, or um, supply chain clubs, they, you know, receive job offers six months prior to their graduation. And I'm not exaggerating. And they're working at really well-recognized, well-respected organizations as we speak. So we do have lots of opportunities and student clubs, of course, is one of them. So you just have to take advantage of everything that we have to offer. Um, and so the, the limit is, is, you know, the sky's the limit if you do. So that's just really add. <laughs> Excellent. Stephanie, we'll come back and ask you about clubs in a minute, but before this uh, question fades from view, um, uh, Karen, uh, Robert wants to know if I took a microeconomics class at a NJ community college, would that satisfy microeconomics for the business core? Uh, yeah, most likely yes, um, but you definitely want to verify um, with Rowan's registrar's office that that's transferable. Um, there's a bunch of different websites that you can check. There's something called NewJerseyTransfer.com. Um, where you can put in your community college and select Rowan and see what courses transfer. Um, so definitely check that because that's regularly, regularly updated. If you're incoming for fall, if you've already been accepted for fall 2020 and you're coming to Rowan, you can email your academic advisor that's assigned to you uh, for fall and they can let you know that information as well. Um, or you can always email me if you, if you want to know and I can let you know ahead of time. Great. So Karen, don't go anywhere. I have another question. Um, are there any sororities specific to the business school? Um, not specific to business. No, we do not have any sororities. I mean, we have two honor societies, which isn't the same thing, but we do have two honor societies specific for business, um, but not any um, specific Greek life. Okay. Stephanie, let's go back to you. Um, maybe uh, since the question previously was about organizations, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about, uh, about the organizations that are affiliated with accounting and finance, but you also have uh, an honor society you might want to tell us about. We do. So um, in, in finance, we have three affiliated clubs. Uh, we have the Financial Management Association, very active club. They generally send their executive board to the national meeting of the FMA, which is a, a professional organization. They were in Chicago this past year. They were in uh, New York City the year before. Um, we have the Rowan Student Investment Group. That's a group of student that actually, students that actually get to manage um, funds and, and uh, map out investment strategies and portfolios for those funds. We have a cryptocurrency club, one of our hot new uh, clubs and topics. We have an accounting society, which is, uh, they bring in a lot of guest speakers. And then we have uh, the, the um, honor society that Dean Lehrman was referencing is called Beta Alpha Psi. It's a national, actually international honor society for accounting, finance, and MIS majors. Um, and one of the things that they do best is they partner with our advisory board. So we have an accounting advisory board and we're launching a finance advisory board. Uh, and these are executive level, uh, mostly alumni, but not entirely alumni, but executive level folks who engage with our students and with our programs. They come in and do guest speakers, uh, guest speaking engagements, uh, really great programs. We also have mentorship programs in accounting and finance where we utilize our alumni associations and uh, network of alumni to mentor students one-on-one -on -one, um, in both the accounting and finance programs. So lots of great professional interaction uh, with our clubs. Great, and, and very true across all of our programs. Uh, Zachary would like to know which department Miss Murtha is from. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm the assistant dean for undergraduate studies at, in the college. Um, but if you had specific questions, I'll chat my email address in the box so that way you can email um, any questions to me. So um, Karen Murtha and, and I are both in the dean's office, so we're not in a specific department. 
Um, Philip, would you like to tell us a little bit about entrepreneurship at Rowan? Sure. Um, so the entrepreneurship program is a pretty young program, relatively speaking. It's been around for less than 20 years, but it is a very exciting, dynamic program. And it's for people who want to be their own boss someday, um, though that doesn't happen right away, um, or people who want to understand what it is like to prosper in a gig economy. Um, we have a great group of faculty. We have a center for innovation and entrepreneurship that is part of the program. Uh, they have, uh, they run all kinds of workshops. Uh, the thing about the entrepreneurship program is there is a strong curriculum, but they have a whole bunch of co-curricular activities that go on. They have coffee with an entrepreneur. The center has all kinds of uh, guest speakers in the evenings. They have all kinds of events uh, throughout the year. They have a maker lab where you can do rapid prototyping and some of that is built into classes like entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, but the good thing about entrepreneurship is it's also the idea of entrepreneurial thinking has become a broad based theme for the College of Business for Rowan University as a whole and really in society in general. And so we try very hard to use that uh, and help all kinds of students, not just entrepreneurship majors. Uh, acquire entrepreneurial thinking or understand what it is like to be an entrepreneur, view the world through an entrepreneur's lens. And, and so we have people in, in biology and in, in the sciences, in, in computer science, in the fine arts, in dance, in theater, uh, all kinds of uh, students who can take uh, entrepreneurship courses. And also we have faculty fellowship programs where faculty from all different uh, areas across the university can, can uh, take that boot camp. And so it's a very uh, broad based, dynamic, exciting area. Of course, for those of you who are really interested in entrepreneurship, it would be a natural major for you. And there's also an entrepreneurship minor for those who don't want to go full on onto entrepreneurship, but want some flavor of it. You can get an entrepreneurship minor, which is actually becoming increasingly popular. So that's entrepreneurship in a nutshell. Again, if you want to find out a lot more about the curriculum, and meet some of the people who lead that area. Um, you can join us on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, for the link that will go out. Uh, but if you have any other specific questions about entrepreneurship, I will try to answer it uh, as best as I can. Great, thank you. Stephanie, before, um, before we forget, um, can you tell us when your event um, specific for your majors is going to be taking place? Yes, happy to. So our finance um, program will be uh, tomorrow, Tuesday at three, and the accounting is on Thursday at three. Great, thank you. May I oh, add our sessions, uh, Dean Lerman? Yes. Okay, so tomorrow at uh, two o'clock, we have the MIS webinar, three o'clock supply chain, and Wednesday at three, it's marketing. Great, excellent. And everybody should get, be getting uh, announcements about this uh, in your email and or text. Uh, so, um, Amy, yeah, do you talk a little bit about um, the, the question is specific around supply chain and logistics mm -hmm. and uh, mentorship or networking opportunities for um, for the, in that area, but maybe mentoring and networking opportunities more generally? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I also was going to add in we have a session tomorrow at twelve thirty where we can talk to you about in greater length and Rachel will be there and another one of my interns to talk about in more detail all the programming our center does. Um, specific to supply chain, um, I wanted to mention, and this actually would apply to all majors, our center over winter break offers an RCPD shadow program. So while it's not a summer long internship, it gives you a taste of what it's like to be at a specific organization. And you sign up to work with someone at a company in a specific role. So we'll, we had and will have supply chain options available. Um, I also wanted to point out, and Dr. Gunner could probably talk to this as well, but the Apex Club, which is the Supply Chain and Logistics Club, is very active and connected to the Apex 
it's the set right there, and it's the South Jersey and Princeton area, the right. two geographic areas. So there's, you know, a chapter that exists, and that chapter actually gets involved with our student chapter a lot and brings professional development events to Rowan for the supply chain students. And they're really passionate about helping connect our students to the industry. Um, there's also a supply chain advisory board of professionals that Dr. Gunner and her faculty work with really closely. And those folks are really interested in giving back and letting us know about internship opportunities and ways to engage. Um, and then on top of that, and this would apply to all students, my office conducts two to three times a semester industry specific events which are networking nights where you meet about 10 to 12 professionals from a specific industry in one evening for speed networking so we'll have our fall 2020 schedule literally i think we're working on like the, the pretty up design of it today so we'll have that out soon and um, there will be something sp specifically focused on each major great may i add yeah amy so thank you thank you for that information it's awesome and um also amy's office helps us to um organize executive residence program oh yeah uh, so this is really uh intimate you know group of students up to like eight students perhaps interacting with a professional uh, our most recent event in supply chain was um campbell soup um the person was in charge of like transportation so our students about eight students i believe spend about an hour and 30 minutes with that executive so and then of course they received significant amount of um you know mentoring from that individual so um yeah i mean all of and amy's office of course is just doing a phenomenal job uh we do have regardless of the major we do have lots of opportunities actually for um just to make sure that students are getting the attention that they need from the faculty staff and you know professionals in the uh, in the industry so Karen while I have you um could you talk a little bit about project based learning because that's something yeah. you're passionate about and maybe you could explain what that is and that's also something that supply chain has projects marketing has projects not just in your department but across across the college of course I'll be happy to thank you so uh to begin with uh, we have a center actually dedicated to experiential learning. So it's in you know the core of our mission, providing you know experiential experiences to our students. So we really take it quite seriously. And um, big part of it is actually project-based learning, and that's exactly what the name suggests: learning by doing. And how do students learn by doing? By helping organizations and businesses, for profit as well as non-profit organizations. So. Um, it, organizations in New Jersey and beyond might need help uh, from like young minds like you. Uh, they may have specific you know, issues and questions, problems, so they approach the center uh, with a request. And we have different you know courses where students collaborate together and you know bring the solutions to uh, to companies you know uh, problem. So. Um, it's it's a really win-win situation. Uh, companies get access to like young talents, young minds, especially if the problem is like social media related, right? Um, young folks like you are really good at it, uh, so they tap into your you know brains. Um, so or yeah, like the most recent ones, like the supply chain, like uh, we have a sort of nascent industry uh, in the uh, packaging. So they wanted to get into different technologies and like the package in particular like transportation. So uh, again, they were really, really happy with the results. So the desirable outcome output of that to like collaboration project based learning is whether or not we can satisfy, you know, organizations with the solutions that the students provide. And most importantly, whether or not, you know, um, the, the, the output of that effort will lead to some sort of internship or full time, you know, position. So most recent examples that I can share with you, um, one of the companies that we work with in supply chain field just past, you know, uh, semester spring 2020, um, they were so happy with the, the the projects. They said, okay, we need two interns who can implement these ideas, you know, on our site. So um, that was really quite exciting, and uh, you know, we advertised the position. So they're hiring two students as interns. 
with a potential to you know with a potential for a full-time job um, in the future so besides project-based learning we have other experiential learning opportunities within the rural culture business uh, it may take, you know, the shape of case studies, simulation, internships like Amy Rhino talked about, or some like study abroad opportunities for uh, for students who are interested in, you know, traveling overseas. So, great, thank you. So, um, I see we're we're getting towards the hour, um, and I would just like to see if Rachel, um, if we can bring Rachel back on and let the student. I'll have the last word, but. <laughs> There is one more question. Yeah. There is one more question here. It says, would it be possible to do a management and finance double major? Let me start and then maybe I can hand it off to Stephanie. So, in fact, it is possible. It requires a few extra courses. I actually have a very clear recollection of a student who finished a management finance major two years ago, went to work for Morgan Stanley. Uh, so it's not that common a combination has been done more than once. Uh, and I think it's a very powerful combination of majors. I'll stop there. Great. Stephanie, you want to add anything about these majors or generally perhaps? Yeah, I would just say generally that uh, you know the farther in advance a student can plan a double major the better. So uh, if you're coming in as a freshman and you know you have an interest in a couple of disciplines, work with your advisor to map that out. Um, even transfer students can certainly declare a second major. Uh, but obviously, the sooner you start that planning, the better. Okay, great. Uh, there is a question um, from Alicia, uh, and it has again to do with supply chain and logistics and the MBA. So just, just to clarify, we have a degree program in supply chain and logistics at the undergrad level. We do not have an MBA in supply chain, but we have a concentration in supply chain at the MBA level that students can take uh, to get additional expertise, something they can put on their uh, transcript. Uh, and we're adding more courses at the graduate level, but again, we don't have per se an MBA. And our MBA um, in all of its manifestations in all of the um, concentrations we have uh, are definitely open to international students. So I hope that answers your question. So um, if we can bring Rachel back up on the stage and um, Rachel, you've heard all kinds of things discussed um, in the last uh, almost an hour. Um, can you share with us uh, any kind of parting words, any advice to students uh, that you might have just any reflection on what you've heard. Sure. Yeah. So one thing that I definitely wanted to emphasize a little bit was about the importance of getting involved within the college of business. Um, each department had did a great job talking about all the different clubs and stuff that uh, the college of business offers and especially the honor society. So Stephanie mentioned beta alpha Psi, which is a really great one for accounting and finance. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to be involved with beta gamma Sigma which is an international honor society that's also in the College of Business. And it's four schools that are AACSB accredited, which the College of Business is. So it's a great way to get involved. It's the top 10% of College of Business students. And this year I was fortunate to be the president and I was actually able to go to one of the conferences. It was in Chicago this year, back in November. So it didn't get canceled, which was awesome. But it was a really great way to meet and interact with international students, not even from the United States, but um, Japan, Singapore, I met so many new people there. There was about over 500 students and I really got to learn and collaborate with so many more people about what their chapters are doing at their schools. And it was me and one other student, but some chapters even brought as much as like 20 students. So it was a great way to get involved with other students. And it made me motivated to come back and do more for our chapter specifically. So I actually just passed on um, my chapter position role to President role to Mike Tettleman, who's going to be a senior in the fall, uh, the, just this past week. So it was a little bit sad, but it's happy for him. And that's something that's really going to be building up and doing events and things that other societies and clubs have also been doing throughout the College of Business. But again, getting involved really is so important. You meet so many people. Not only do you make friend connections, but you also make employer connections, which really do go a long way when you are ready to start your career. So that's definitely one thing that I wanted to emphasize and just in general, the College of Business is so great and 
getting involved as possible with everything that they offer will not do you wrong. So if anyone has any specific questions, I'm definitely happy to answer for those as well. Great, thank you, Rachel. Um, we're actually very close to being out of time, but before I turn it over to Jessica, uh, I just wanna say that I also really enjoy meeting with students and I uh, try to have many opportunities for students to get to know me and me to get to know students. So uh, in the start of the year, um, we typically have a big freshman event um, where the freshmen meet the dean and do fun things, win prizes. Uh, and I also have every two weeks um, a dean's office hour. I have a gigantic bowl of chocolate that students come and scoop up and have coffee and just chat with each other and chat with me. So uh, I think it's important that you get to know um, the leadership of the college and even more important that I get to know you and what's on your mind. So um, I enjoy that very much. I hope I will get to meet a lot of you in the fall. So Jessica, I'll turn it back over to you. Great, Sue, thank you so much. You did an awesome job in this session. I'm very impressed. You guys were all great. I want to especially thank our College of Business faculty, leadership, and Rachel, our student, for participating today. And really for our accepted and prospective students for joining us this afternoon. I hope you guys were able to learn a lot of great information. I know a lot of good information was shared and so many questions were asked and answered. And thank you all for your participation. So special congratulations again to our incoming students. We are looking forward to seeing you on campus as soon as we can, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. We will see you at some more virtual events throughout the summer. Until then, be safe, stay healthy, and we will see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.